Okay, guys, this is Army Lieutenant Nazario. Nazario from the Barrio. And this is one of the latest incidents that's showing that the honeymoon is over for Joe Biden. He had his little three month honeymoon where he didn't have to worry about nothing from liberals that they had trained to destroy other people's stuff when they see a viral video clip of a police interaction <laughs> involving a black guy in this case a black and latino guy and regardless of the person's racial makeup when you have a negative interaction with police, you black. Don't matter if you biracial like this guy or biracial like the guy in Minneapolis. You black. And I'm starting to get offended by the fact that these guys are being called black. Because in most of these cases, these guys are irrational, childish, show an inability to follow directions can't comprehend simple commands just reckless foolish and a myriad of other adjectives that I could use you pick one but these people share two racial backgrounds and because they display these negative characteristics they just black. One of the police officers involved in a controversial traffic stop of a black and Latino army officer in December has been fired. Body camera footage shows Windsor, Virginia police officers Joe Gutierrez and Daniel Crocker. Joe Gutierrez? So he's Latino too. The cop is Latino and the guy getting pulled over for the traffic stop is Latino. Well, the guy getting pulled over is black and Latino. But isn't this Latino on Latino police harassment? Couldn't it be his Latino side is harassing that guy? Is getting harassed by this. I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> but they trying to make it out to be a black guy. Traffic stop of a black and Latino army officer in December has been fired. Body camera footage shows Windsor, Virginia police officers Joe Gutierrez and Daniel Crocker pointing their guns at Army 2nd Lieutenant Karan Nazario before Gutierrez pepper sprays him. Lieutenant Nazario was released without being charged and he is now suing both officers. CBS News correspondent Christina Ruffini has the story. What's going on? How many occupants are in your vehicle? It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? Well, listen. They tried to pull you over. You kept driving. You said you wanted to get to a well-lit spot. So you drove, I don't know how long, a ways to a gas station where you pulled over. So now... They don't know that that's what you did. They don't know what's going on. They know they put their lights up and usually people pull over. And I know now everybody going to say online, I always go to a well-lit... No, the fuck you don't. You pull right the fuck over where they pull your ass over at. Shut up. But this guy, he wanted to go to a well-lit place. And they ain't know that. They probably thought you was fleeing police. What's going on? How many occupants are in your vehicle? It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? The door slowly. Step out. Get out. Get out of the car. Get out. Now. I have not committed any crime. In body camera and cell phone video, Army 2nd Lieutenant Caron Nazario, still in his uniform, holds his hands out the window of his new car. Who thinks this guy... If he's not recording this, 
makes this as difficult as it as it is. Who thinks this guy who just driving on dealer tax because he just bought the car and he doesn't have like state issue tax? Who thinks that this guy doesn't just pull over? Oh yeah, no, nah, that's actually I just bought the car, state issue. Here go my blah, 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 boom, gone in two minutes. Who thinks that this guy don't don't do that if he don't have cell phone? his cell phone recording himself he made this difficult because he was recording and he knew that was going to happen to him because there's a million traffic stops every day in this great country there's 17,985 police departments in this country 17,985 police departments working 365 days a year and they pulled up something from December to get people riled up during the George Floyd trial <laughs> so look there's millions of traffic stops this stuff happens, your brother gets killed so very rarely. And this brother knows that. And he knew he wasn't going to die. That's why he acted like a jackass here. He knew that if he didn't grab the cop's weapon or assault them, he wasn't going to die. But he was going to be able to get a big payday by saying he was harassed. Turn your vehicle! It's only myself. Why are your weapons drawn? What's going on? The door slowly step out! Get out! Get out of the car! Get out! Now! I have not committed any crime. In body camera and cell phone video, Army 2nd Lieutenant Caron Nazario, still in his uniform, holds his hands out the window of his new car, while two Windsor, Virginia police officers, guns drawn, order him to get out. I'm honestly afraid. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to let the video play. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that PayPal. Make sure you hit the super chat. Unfortunately, there's only one way to know that y'all support the channel is if you hit the PayPal, you hit the super chat, you hit the cash app, you hit the like button, you hit the share button. All that other stuff doesn't, we don't know. There's only ways you can show that you're support for the channel are tangible ways. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of this, man. Hit one and tell me if you're tired of this too. This whole theory that when you're scared, you disobey commands. Now, I've been around. I've been on both sides of robberies and whatnot. It is what it is. And I've seen the fear in people's faces and I've had the fear in my face on me and I know one thing when Pookie and Ray Ray show up and they like don't move get on the ground take this out turn your this, this, that, and start giving commands if you're afraid you do what they say and if you're not afraid you don't do what they say and the same thing is in every situation it's no different with cops. This whole notion that I'm afraid of cops, so I'm going to do the opposite of what they say is bullshit. That's not human nature. Humans don't operate like that. They just don't. Okay? We just don't. We don't operate like that. When we're afraid and we're given commands, we oblige to those commands. If we're afraid. If we're not afraid... Then we do the opposite. You remember being in school and the bully come up and say, give me your lunch money? Well, if you're afraid, you give them your lunch money. And if you're not afraid, you say, meet me at 3 o'clock <laughs> at the playground. We gonna, I'm going to give you my lunch money then. This whole notion, 
He was afraid. So he did the opposite of what the cops had told him to do. It's not like the cops said, let me test out your throat or something like that. Cop ain't say nothing crazy. The cop said, get out of the car. I'm afraid. Get on the ground. I'm afraid. Nah, you ain't afraid. You the opposite. You not afraid. That's why you disobeyed. Because y'all wouldn't survive very long in these neighbor, these democratically run cities being afraid and doing the opposite of what people who are making you afraid tell you to do. Okay? When the police come around the neighborhood and they canvassing after a shooting and they asking citizens for information to help solve the crime, and all the people scared of the little 15 and 16 year old gang members in the neighborhood. Does their fear make them stand there and talk to the police? <laughs> or do their fear make them, I don't know nothing, and slam the door in the police face? I'm tired of this shit where everybody keeps talking about the black person was scared. That's why they did the opposite of what the police was asking them to do. That's why they fucked with the police because they were scared. Then you find out the nigga been arrested a thousand times. In this case, it's probably not the case. But most cases, you find out the, the, the joker been arrested a thousand times. <laughs> How he get to jail? How he get to the jail the other thousand times he was arrested? Nazario repeatedly asks why he's been pulled over before ex-officer Joe Gutierrez pepper sprays him through the open window. Sir, just get out the car. I'm trying to breathe. Oh, my dog is in the back. My dog is choking right now. Your dog is choking because you you didn't get out the car. You made a pepper spray you in the car. You didn't even get out the car and start acting the fool so they could pepper spray you out the car. You the reason your dog's choking. But you black, so nothing you... Nothing you, no action you take should be, should lead to anything. You you should be able to do whatever you want and get a good, a positive reaction every time. I mean, you black and Latino. Sir, just get out the car. I'm trying to breathe. Oh, my dog is in the back. My dog is choking right get now. Get out of the car. Nazario is then kicked, forced to the ground, and put in handcuffs. Why am I being treated? The incident report says Nazario was pulled over for not having tags displayed on his SUV. But the temporary dealer plate is visible in the officer's body cam video. The report also said officers treated it as a high-risk stop because Nazario had tinted windows and drove at a very low speed to a gas station before pulling over. A move Gutierrez later said he understood. As far as not stopping, Jonathan Arthur represents Cesario. When you look in your rearview mirror and you see two firearms trained at you, you gotta get real calm, real quick, if you wanna get out of there alive. You know, it's a credit to his training. What are you, a specialist corporal? What are you? I'm a lieutenant. According to the lawsuit, the officers also threatened to derail Nazario's military career if he pursued further action against them. If you wanna just chill, let this go, and no charges filed, that didn't sound like them trying to derail his military career. <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> Make sure you hit that like button, hit that PayPal, hit that super chat, hit that cash app. Did I miss something? I, I didn't see them threatening to derail his military career. I didn't see two beat cops in Windsor, Virginia. Population 5,000. Talking about how they going to derail a Army lieutenant's career. 
from a traffic stop where no crime was committed and the guy was let go. These some powerful Windsor police beat cops. <laughs> but I still didn't hear what they said. That, tell me if you heard it. According to the lawsuit, the officers also threatened to derail Nazario's military career if he pursued further action against them. If you want to just chill, let this go, and no charges filed, I'll take the handcuffs off, I'll get your bottle of water to drink on, and sit here until you feel comfortable driving. Now, after that search of his vehicle turned up no violations, Nazario was released without charge. The governor of Virginia has asked state police to investigate the incident. CBS News reached out to the Windsor Police Department. We did not hear back. Anthony Nazario's attorney said he wanted to file the lawsuit to hold these two officers accountable. And so these kinds of stops stop happening. To these types of stops stop happening. How could this not happen again? There's 17,000 985 police departments in this country working 365 days a year. Just look at what happened in D.C. the last couple of months. The Capitol Police. That's not even our police. We, we have the Metropolitan Police Department. The Capitol Police just patrol the area around the Capitol building. And look at how much shit they had to deal with. <laughs> There's 17,984 <laughs> other police departments in this country. And he want to make sure that traffic stops like this never happen again. That's why I hate liberals. They always try to do something that the impossible. So it was so weird that they get to keep complaining and keep kicking up dust for it in the time. We want to make it so no woman ever gets cat called in the streets ever again. <laughs> we want to make it so no kid ever gets bullied in school ever again. Like, come on, man. Shit happens, man. And especially when you act like a damn jackass. <laughs> the governor of Virginia has asked state police to investigate the incident. CBS News reached out to the Windsor Police Department. We did not hear back. Anthony Nazario's attorney said he wanted to file the lawsuit to hold these two officers accountable. And so these kinds of stops stop happening. Christina Ruffini, thanks, Christina. Wow. I mean, I can't imagine pulling into a gas station and suddenly facing a couple of guys with guns looked pointed in your window. But this is the thing, guys. He was calm the whole the time. time. Yeah. And he was lieutenant. calm. They weren't. He's in uniform. And when they said he drove at a low rate of speed, that should show he wasn't trying to get away. No. And I don't blame him. As a black man in this country, no. stop getting stopped on a rural highway. He's thinking, let me get to where there's it's light. Where it's lit, yeah. And he immediately started cooperating. Just the, This is the thing that bothers me. It was such an issue of power and control. They did not treat that man like a human being. Yeah. And, and that's and what's since, so troubling about it. And since when do you get pulled over for having tinted windows? With, yeah, they could have solved that much differently. Which, driving slow was a problem. We know driving fast is a problem. So what's the yes, solution here? Yeah. Yeah. They said he got he got pulled over too, Anthony, because he didn't have a, a license plate on the back. It was but there. It, but it, it turns out it was. It was a temporary it, one it, yeah, in the window. The report showed it was yeah, there. Yeah, it was there. Take a peek. I know you heard that white man that news anchor, I couldn't imagine ever being uh, As if the white people never have interactions with cops. And white people who are, like, of high status, will never, ever, ever, ever have interactions with cops. Well, that's not true. White people have tons of interactions with cops. Less than black people because their neighborhoods are not as violent and crime-ridden as black neighborhoods. So the police aren't camped out in their neighborhoods. The police are in their neighborhoods more as a, you know, protect and serve rather than a chase bad guys or run to the scene of a shooting or, you know, Patrol an open air drug market. Less of that. They have that, but it's less of that, so there's less police in their communities. However, as you'll see in this case, 
in Columbus, Ohio, this ATF agent who was stopping by a woman's house to do some field work, and he was in street clothes because the woman's husband apparently there was a stairway or he had guns at the house and this ATF agent was coming to retrieve those guns. The woman looks through the peephole. She sees some man saying he's an ATF agent in street clothes. She don't know. So she don't open up the door. And she calls the police. She thinks it's some guy trying to, you know, pull a George Floyd. <laughs> She think it's a guy try to pull a George Floyd. Because you know George Floyd, one of his things was he'd go around <laughs> pretending like he was with the water department. And then he would... <laughs> he would go around with a, with a uniform on for the water department and he would knock on people's doors. And then when the, you know person would come to the door and answer the door he would barge in with a gun and then all his boys would come in with guns and then they would hold the person at basically hostage with at gunpoint and ransack the house looking for whatever they had and then leave they were known as the Robinson Jackers they all been locked up that was George Floyd's clique and <laughs> That's what they did. That's what one of one of the times we went to the pen for. So it's very this woman right here you about to see in this you're not about to see the woman, but this case you're about to see. I don't blame this woman for not opening the door when this he he's really an ATF agent. He was coming by doing some field work in street clothes because they don't wear police uniforms, ATF agents when they're doing field work and. She called the police on him. And this is where it picks up at. Hey, turn around. Let me see your hands. Turn around. Let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. I'm a federal agent. 9171 10 3. I'm a federal agent. Get on the ground! Get on the ground. I'm a federal agent. I'm a Why federal wouldn't you agent. show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward. Okay. You didn't ask for it. Get on the ground. We'll figure it out. Not getting on the ground. Well, then stay where you're at. I'll stay where I'm at. Fine. Why do you got to make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting on the ground. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here and doesn't have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine. Fine. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on the ground. I'm not getting on the ground. for things. I'm not getting on the ground. I got my ID. Do not reach for your waist. Keep your hands up. I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> Sound familiar to you? <laughs> what would police be like if every time a suspect, who this guy is, like, he's a suspect now, they came, they told you what to do, you ignored him. Now it's, it ain't even about the woman's call no more. That's what thing people don't understand. 
they arrived because the woman called, said you was impersonating the officer, which which you weren't. You're really an ATF agent. But now we we gave you some commands and you ignored them. So it it it, it ain't about none of that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it ain't about none of that. Okay? It's like if I'm your neighbor and you park in my parking space and I come over there and knock on your door to talk about your parking space and you hog spit in my face. Well, we ain't talking about the parking space no more. We talking about this loogie that's running down my face now. Okay? <laughs> so y'all gotta understand that about police that things have changed but what would police be, be like if every time a suspect said they was having a heart condition or something was wrong they were having a heart attack or they couldn't breathe the police was just alright back up let them, let them go you know how often they hear that they hear that they hear that every goddamn day <laughs> When you arrest us, I'm having a heart condition. I'm having a heart for palpitations. My, of course, somebody going to say that when they don't want to be restrained. They're going to make up something. It's common. It's a very common thing. It happens all the time. You don't know because you never get arrested. The majority of people never get arrested. They never have any interactions with cops. So they just going by what they think would happen, what they think should happen. When you work in the beat, you won't hear a bunch of stuff from, police, from, from, from people that don't want to be arrested. They going to tell you anything. From I'm a federal agent. No, I won't get that on the ground. You know who I am? I'm a federal agent. What's your deal, man? To who do you think you are? Nobody. <laughs> uh, so this went on. They they got him up and they chastised him and he apologized and he it on and on and on, but. And they let him go because he really is a federal agent. But the beat cops, when the cops show up, man, they got jurisdiction, man. All right? They, they, they running the show. When they show up, look, it don't matter who you are. A dope fiend, a crackhead, a wino, somebody running around naked on PCP, somebody that just beat up their parents. Somebody who fell asleep in a Wendy's <laughs> drive-thru. 
Somebody was selling loose cigarettes out in front of the carryout. It don't matter who you are, okay? Even if you're an ATF agent, listen to the commands, and you won't you won't even get this far. Because you're going to end up doing what they say in the long run anyway. You're going to get on that ground. Trust me. You're going to show them how your ID. You're going to get out that car. Whatever they ask you to do, you're going to do it eventually. But you can do it on your own. <laughs> or you can have some help.